Are some of us just born to be thin? Is it good genes, good upbringing, or is it just luck? I actually believe it's a combination of both nurture and nature. Now, of course, we all have our own internal priority of what our body will do with excess energy that we eat. But we need to keep it in mind that even if our initial body response isn't to add weight, eventually that's part of what happens for myself before I turned 30, the extra energy that I was eating was going to my joints and causing inflammation. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And after I turned 30, it started to show itself as weight. If our eating habits remain excessive, our weight will just rise. So it's important for us to learn better ways to manage our food so that we can live healthier lives well into the future. Wellness Warriors, if you want to manage your weight, it's important for you to improve your health. On Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet, we work on the mindset necessary to achieve that goal. Subscribe and hit the bell so that you can get on the road to health. First of all, let's just start with the bare basic. If you overeat anything, protein, fat, carbohydrates, you will gain weight. There's no getting around that. Overeating is overeating. Now that I've said that, it's easy to overeat carbohydrates because to do that, you just need to eat more than 20 grams of carbs per day. Personally, before I understood that, I was eating 300 to 400 grams of carbs per day. Obviously, I was overeating them. Most people eat 300 to 400 grams of carbs a day. It's very easy to do. Even if you get a plan from a nutritionist, when you sit down and start adding up those numbers, you're somewhere between 250 and 400 grams of carbs a day, depending on how you apply that person's plan. It's important for us to understand that anything over 20 grams isn't healthy for us. Now, recently I had a viewer ask me to look at what they were eating because they were sure that somehow they're doing keto incorrectly, but they know that they're eating 20 grams of carbs or less. They think they're doing it well, but they haven't had any weight loss in about six months. So that's why today we're talking about this idea of like what causes us to be thin versus what causes us to be overweight? And is it just my natural inclination towards thinness? Well, I could tell you right now, I'm standing in front of you, what would be considered thin, and this was not the natural inclination a few months ago, but it was a few years ago. So why did it change? What was going on? And it's complicated. So let's make it less complicated. I wanna point out that the 20 grams of carb piece of the puzzle, I only found out much later. The reason that it matters is that eventually overeating carbohydrates catches up with us. But there were some healthy behaviors that I was doing, that I've resumed doing, that if you guys put these into practice, and if you pay attention, our children do these behaviors. That's where the nurture part comes in. We are the ones that block our kids from continuing to do these behaviors. So if you really wanna make your household healthy, See these points I'm gonna make right now and allow your children to do them. The first one, eating to satiation. When I watched the white coat video from Dr. Westman, that was one of the things he pointed out that we need to remember to eat to satiation. Stop overeating, stop eating till we're full. And satiation means I stop eating when I'm no longer hungry, not when I'm full. Our children do this. As a child, I did this. I remember one of the biggest complaints my parents had was how slowly I ate. And of course, eating slowly meant that I ended up feeling full, right? Because it takes a little bit of time when you're eating for the signal to go back and forth between your brain and your stomach to know like, when should I stop eating? And because I was eating so slowly and the Caribbean sized meals that they were, I was being given to eat didn't match right? Because I could never get through the food that they were putting in front of me because I was eating so slowly that I would get that signal that, okay, I want more food. And then now there's a fight happening between us because they want me to finish eating. And I'm like, I don't want it. And this happens with our kids all the time. I remember with my daughter, I had the same frustration at the beginning until eventually I just said, you know what, eat what you want. But that was my attitude. I've seen lots of parents who put food in front of their kids and then they're trying, they're struggling with them to eat. So we push our kids to ignore the signal that's saying, hey, you've had enough. 
and then they overeat and then later on we're worried about that and we're trying to put them on diets another thing that you'll notice about your kids is that if they're having fun so playing with either toys or friends trying to get them off of whatever they're doing to come and have a meal is an exercise in futility they don't want to do it they're having too much fun our kids do not get their entertainment from food it's a chore they sit they eat because they need the fuel and nutrients and then they want to get back to their toys back to their friends they do not use food for entertainment and as a matter of fact trying to get them to take a break to go to the bathroom is even a struggle playing trumps all have you ever asked yourself why it is that your kids don't rush away from the toys to go get something to eat how is it that they're able to just play all day if you do not call them for lunch they do not come for lunch if you do not call them for supper they do not come for supper how come they're able to do that well it's because they tap into the storage that they have on them wellness warriors we are so conditioned that every time we feel the smallest little eh, we're running for food this is the second thing that we need to think about when it comes to what is it that thinner people allow themselves to do naturally that we struggle with every time we feel a little bit of hunger we're moving towards food and we create situations where that's easier and easier for us to do I want to know if you guys do this because I know I was doing this we don't just pack a lunch we pack lunch and snacks we actually don't have the scenario where we need to wait a little bit to get food whether the snacks are in our lunch boxes, in our purses, in our desk drawer, when we're at work or in our car, or we always have access. To, put in the comments below, do you have snacks around you for just in case you get hungry? Do you purchase snacks for just in case you get hungry? Wellness warriors, especially those of us who are trying to lose weight, if every time I have a small amount of hunger. I eat something. When is my body taking energy from me? And what's really interesting, again, if we look at our kids, even when we ask them, hey, are you hungry? And we're going to get a, oh yeah, mom, yeah, I could, I could eat now. And then we weren't ready and we go and start making food. What happens? Well, by the time we put the food in front of those kids, they're not hungry anymore. And now they're picking at the food and maybe they take one or two bites and they're like, oh, okay, that's enough. And they're off. Why? Because they had already tapped into the reserves that are on board. We all have reserves on board. And when we allow ourselves to tap into them, then we don't end up chasing food as often. One of the things that people who are thinner are comfortable with is this idea that, well, the hunger is going to come and go because that's what it does. It comes and goes. And if I know that the hunger is going to come and go and I don't chase food as soon as I feel, if I know that, okay, like I still have time to finish doing what I'm doing here and now I'm going to get some food after, right? Then it's okay if I feel hungry for a few minutes because I know that the hunger is going to pass. And I, I'm not saying don't eat. I'm not saying if it's supper time, don't eat. What I'm looking at is all the people that I know who are snacking between meals because every time I get a feeling of hunger, I feel like I need to address that. That is not reality. We get feelings of hunger quite regularly. I know that I do. I get feelings of hunger and then they come and they go. And if I happen to be in the process of, oh, it's time to me to, for me to eat, I will go make my meal. But Again, we go back to this idea that if I'm actually hungry, if it's really time for Violet to eat, that hunger is going to stay. I'm going to feel it. It's going to be there. And it's not just going to go away because my body pulled a few bits of energy from me. If I need to refuel, I need to refuel. Another thing that you're going to notice about thin people, and I, I absolutely remember this in my 20s and my teens, actually, upset did not equal eat if i was angry or if i was scared oh my goodness exam time was the worst time for me wanting to get great grades and focusing on studying and worrying about what kind of test it was going to be and any time that i was any kind of nervous scared sad 
food was the furthest thing from my mind. I remember exam periods of time where in a three, four day period, if I had two meals, that was a lot. When you're not using food as a way to solve your problems, which most thin people don't do, but people who are overweight do that. I'm upset, I eat. I'm scared, I eat. I'm frustrated, I eat. I'm bored, I eat. I remember being super bored as a teen and food was not the thing that was on my attention. It was how can I find people? So what's interesting is that thin people, when they're upset, focus on solving the thing that's making them upset. They do not focus on food. So this goes to this other idea of do not entertain yourself with food. Our kids, again, they have this right. Entertainment comes from playing with toys. Entertainment comes with playing from friends. Entertainment is not coming from food. And soothing myself is not coming from food. Solving my problems isn't giving myself something to eat when there's a real problem happening there. It's figuring out how to solve the problem. Again, as parents, we mess this up. My kid is sad. Oh my goodness. I give them ice cream. My kid is sad. Oh my goodness. I give them a chocolate bar. No, my kid is sad. Help them solve the problem. You failed a test, help them to study better next time. Food is not the answer. I have to say that my adventures in keto and carnivore has really solidified for me that food is for fueling the body, that food is for building the body, that food is not for fun. Variety of food, fun food, like food as entertainment doesn't make sense. I'm very happy to eat something that tastes tasty. And I can eat that every day. And if I switch back and forth between two or three different things, typically I'm doing pork, chicken, eggs, fish, occasionally a keto pizza. If I flip back and forth between those four things most of the time, and then once in a while, and I mean once in a while, a keto pizza, I have more than enough variety. I think that people focus on variety because they're still trying to keep fun in their food world. And this focus on variety actually gets us into trouble. Again, rather than letting my entertainment come from people or come from activities or hobbies, follow your children. They let their entertainment come from things that are not food. And it's because that's the healthy thing to do. We push our kids into these bad habits because we were pushed into these bad habits and we don't realize that those bad habits are what help us to maintain extra weight on us that does not need to be there. We need to prioritize health over taste because that's the way that you're going to be able to maintain your health far into the future. There's a video on the screen right here that's talking about how I was able to lose 70 pounds doing a healthy ketogenic lifestyle. I want to thank you for watching Mind Blowing Health and Wellness with Violet Wellness Warriors. Always happy that you come back. Everybody who's new, subscribe ring the bell. I'll talk to you guys again next week.